So before we begin today's session, I'd like to thank the folks who are funding Cochrane Canada and providing support for the work that we do. The Canadian Institutes of Health Research and CADIS as well. I'd also like to thank PAHO, the WHO Research Promotion and Development Group, for their partnership. PAHO is kindly providing us the software that we're using today, um, Illuminate or Blackboard Collaborate. So thank you to them for their support. So today's session is on Blackboard Collaborate, or Illuminate, uh, for speakers. Really for folks who are going to be working with the Canadian Cochrane Centre and using Illuminate as, their, um, a, a, as a tool to present a webinar. So again, I'd like to thank PAHO very much. Can we give a quick round of applause by clicking on your little applause in the button there? We're just testing out some of the functions of Illuminate. So if you can please click a little applause. And I see a hand raising from Sally. Sally, did you want to add something? Sorry, I was trying to click applause. <laughs> What? This is actually one of the advantages to having a really small session today. It means we can actually fiddle around with some of the functions of Illuminate so you can really can become comfortable with it. So you're right, what you were clicking there was the uh, was raising the applause, okay? And what you saw, you saw a blue button um, indicating that your hand was raised. That's how I knew that you were uh, you were asking a question. So trying the applause one more time and then we'll move forward. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you ever so much for that. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the functions of the Illuminate webinar and through its interface. This is a screenshot of what we're all looking at right now. Over on the left hand side, you'll see this chat room, which we've all been able to use really well this morning, or this afternoon, sorry Sally. Um, if you do have a message, you type it in there and you can send. There's also the microphone function that we've just gone through. When it comes to presenting an Illuminate session, an important thing to remember is that only one person speaks at a time. Um, this really helps for the clarity and for the, uh, for the function of the session. So as a speaker, when you're giving your presentation, you'll do what I've been doing and say, oh, I see your hand is raised, I'd like to turn it over to so-and-so. This allows them to know that it's their turn to speak. And to speak, as we've all seen, you press the microphone button and then you remember to release it at the end. <laughs> Who would like to try? I think we've all tried this morning, so we're okay on, uh, on using, the, using the chat function and using the microphone. In terms of the participants window, participants' names are going to be shown in alphabetical order. Um, I've given everybody this morning moderator privileges, which you see in the brackets there. And the person who is using the microphone um, the speakers will be shown in bold at the top of the list. You'll see it in blue, my name, the session manager there. You'll notice when you both signed up for this for the webinar that there was a uh, participant number provided to you that you could use anonymously to sign in. And a lot of people do, uh, do prefer to use that rather than giving their actual names. Um, so please use that name. Even if you know that participant number five is, is Bob Smith, please do use participant one because there may be a reason why that person wanted to remain anonymous. You were both given the, uh, the participant's login for Illuminate. As a speaker, we will then assign you the moderator privilege. As your name appears in bold once we've done that, and as you both did, you needed to close that recording pop-up box. The session manager is the person who logged in using the moderator key, and that was me. So both of you will use the same login next time you present with, with Illuminate, and I'll transfer the moderator privileges over to you. An important feature about the, uh, the moderator's view is this follow moderator over on the right-hand side. This means that somebody cannot randomly skip through your slides, which is important. Um, you want people to be, uh, to be following the slides as you're going through it rather than going through it at, at, their, own, at their own leisure. Um, so it's really important that we have that button clicked off. And I see that uh, Lucy Turner is just joining us. 
So I'll give Lucy a moment to do her audio setup. Lucy, to do your audio, you're going to go to Tools, Audio, and Audio Setup at the top, and that'll allow you to participate as a speaker. So we're just taking a look at this moderator's view. Um, and I'm going to give Lucy moderator privileges so that she can see the same thing that everybody else is. Lucy, you're going to see a pop-up button that's going to say, um, would you like to start the recording? You can say no. So can I please get a happy face from everybody if you can see that moderator view? Thank you, Mary Ellen. Thank you, Lucy. And thank you, Sally. Beautiful. So you'll see the toolbar across the top. We're going to go through those functions individually. You'll also see a circle to the left of webinar orientation. And that highlights some of the, some of the other functions for this whiteboard that we'll look at. Down in the bottom left, that circle indicates the recording functions. And just so you know, this session is indeed being recorded. The participants will also see this participant window. And again, as a speaker, you'll ask them to raise their hand to indicate that they'd like to speak. If somebody does have a question, you'll see a queue appearing in numbered order, and names are bumped to the top of the participant list. Just as a trial run, can everybody raise their hand to indicate that they'd like to ask a question? Beautiful. One, two, three, four. And with those four hands raised, you should see uh, uh, the blue flashing. You should have heard that sound indicating that the hand was raised. Once you've asked the people's questions, um, you click on this blue bar to release the questions there. I've now removed all of your questions by clicking on under the question mark. Lucy, did you have a question? OK, no, we're good. Um, participants can also use these emoticons to communicate. The happy face, which we've seen, the applause, confusion, or disagreement. Um, it's a way to get your participants to engage in the webinar so that you know they're there, you know that they can hear you, and it allows people to, uh, to really be working as a group when you're going through your discussion points. Illuminate also allows you to do a poll. Under the participants window, right now you'll see a green check mark and an X. We'll go through some of these polling functions in a little bit more detail momentarily. So to conduct a poll, you have a few options. You can use the yes, no, which we already see. You have the choice of three options, four options, or five options. You can also show the responses to everybody who's attending the session. Um, deselect the uh, making responses visible. Um, participants won't see each other's answers. Participants won't see their answer in the window, only which button they've selected. So for now, can everybody take a quick check mark? We all agree that, uh, that we're going to do a check mark. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go to Tools and Polling, and I'm going to say um, Publish the Statistics to the Whiteboard. We can see that everybody in the room checked yes. So if you'd like to publish, there's a red arrow indicating how you publish directly to the whiteboard so that people see what the answers to the poll were. Beautiful. Thank you, whoever clicked that. <laughs> and you can do live polls so that the results are being shown as people do them, um, so that results come through as they're being collected. So a question for everybody. Are you joining today's webinar with a refreshing beverage? So I'm going to go to polling, I'm going to tools, and then I'm going to polling, and I'm going to say that I'd like A to E multiple choices. So now that I've done that, you should see A, B, C, D, E. Could you please indicate whether you're joining today's webinar with a refreshing beverage? And we're going to publish those results to the whiteboard. There we go. 
So we see a couple of nothings. We see I'm drinking tea, and we have a coffee drinker, and that's Sally. So you can see how using a poll, um, if you're doing something like asking, has anybody heard about the risk of bias before? Or is anybody familiar with the work of the Cochrane Editorial Unit? And so forth. You can see how, uh, how this might really help people to become engaged in your webinar. You can also uh, step away from the session momentarily if you wish. When it comes to permissions, if you look again at the, uh, at the participants window where you see our names, you'll see these little icons. The, uh, the, the microphone icon, obviously it's a microphone, and you can see the one that's orange, that's me who's speaking. Beside that, we have a webcam function. So if people did have a webcam that they wanted to set up, they could do so. We have a chat room function beside that. And you'll notice I'm about to start typing in here. I'm typing so that, oops, so that we can all see what's happening. And if you'll notice, you'll see my speech bubble has turned to orange so that when you're giving your session, you know that somebody's typing in. So if you're waiting for somebody, you can say something like, oh, I see that, uh, that Sally's just typing in right now, so we're just going to give her a moment to reply. That can help you to avoid dead air. Beside that, we have um, application sharing, and then we have the whiteboard. And you can click the top of that column to change permissions or status. You might choose to do that if, for some reason, you did not want people to be typing into the, uh, into the chat room. Um, which avoids people going back and forth too much. So changes I usually make, taking off the webcam, which I'm going to do right now, and the chat room, and sometimes the whiteboard. Are there any questions at this point? I'll give a moment for either some uh, raised hands or to see somebody typing in. I see a couple of people are typing in some questions. Thank you. There's a no from Lucy. And we're just waiting for Sally to finish her question. How do you... There's a... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. We work in a hospital and have a lot of uh, a lot of codes during the day. I see that Sally's raised her hand for a question. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering how you took off the different options. Thanks for your question, Sally. To take off the different options, you click in the top of the column. Um, so when you, have, uh, when you have participants as opposed to moderators, because as moderator we're all going to have the same functions, so I'm sorry I, I can't show that at the moment. But when you have participants, what you would do is click on the top microphone at the top of each column, or you would click on the video cam, or you would click on the, um, on the chat room. So you just click on the header of each column. If you hover over it, you'll see how that happens. And I'm just giving Lucy a moment to finish typing in her question. Oh, no problem. No problem. Lucy's just saying she didn't realize her clicking would take it off for everyone. Um, no worries, no worries. There's no questions all clear. We'll go forward then. So for the chat room, um, when you send a chat automatically by default, um, it goes to the uh, uh, goes to the room. So if you are typing a response to somebody, please take a moment and just make sure you're sending it to the right person. Um, so for example, if you hover over where it says uh, send to moderators, you can see where this blue arrow is. If you look at that drop down, um, you'll see that you can send to the room, to moderators, to selected participants, and so forth. And I see that Lucy's written a uh, hi, Sally. This is illustrating one of the functions that um, it's important to keep in mind, that moderators can see everything. <laughs> uh, not that, of course, that was problematic to see, but um, when you do send just to one person, the moderators can see everything. 
Indeed, an oh dear. <laughs> yes, no problem, no problem. Um, so it's important to, to understand that so that if somebody, if you are giving a presentation and somebody writes in, hi, Aaron, I'm not sure um, if I'm doing the right thing. If I then type back to this room, everybody will see my answer to Lucy saying, oh, Lucy, that's not the right thing or whatever it is. Um, so please do be cautious when you're, when you're sending that chat. Take a second and just make sure you're sending it to the right person. Um, and because I did not turn off whiteboard privileges, that is why Lucy was able to write to Sally. Um, and so this is why this is one of the functions um, that we usually turn off so that you don't have people uh, sending messages back and forth. Um, so here we go. And by restricting those chat messages and being careful of who you type back to, um, it allows the moderator for example, me, um, to field technical questions. This means that as a speaker, if somebody has a technical problem, um, you can continue with your presentation while I answer them using the chat function. Um, and those, uh, those responses are not included. You won't see those in the recording. The whiteboard is the central part where, uh, where we're looking at these slides. Um, I see that uh, Lu um, Sally has a question. Sally? Hi, sorry. If you turn off the whiteboard options, that still, because if I turn them off, does that mean I can still respond? Or would I have to turn them back on to respond? Thanks for the question, Sally. As the moderator, you'll still be able to type. Um, what that means is that it, it Unfortunately, right now you can't see it because because we're all moderators. There are actually no participants. Um, so normally, what you would see it, for your participants is that you can limit uh, participant to participant conversation. The moderators will still be able to chat, and they'll still be able to send to you as the moderator of the room. It's just from participant to participant. It, d does that help? Is that clear? Great, thank you. So as somebody who's presenting, um, you'll be advancing your own slides. And you can see the advancing your slides up at the top using what you would consider, I guess, um, the same thing you see on your DVD player to go forward, back, reverse, and so forth. I've already mentioned that it's important to uh, click on the follow the moderators um, because, again, you don't want people to be, uh, to be flipping back and forth. Um, one other thing that you might want to think about here is that uh, you can go to a specific slide in your presentation. So if you click on the drop down here, if you know that you'd like to proceed to um, an icebreaker, for example, you can go directly to that slide if you've set up titles for all of your slides. An important note is that as a speaker, You'll notice that um, you'll notice the slides I've been using have been actually quite boring. Really, there's there's no animation, there's no funny, uh, there's no funniness. That's because when you upload your slides, any custom animation is going to be lost. So I see that we have an additional participant who's just joined us. Um, participant number five. If you'd like to send a smiley face just to say hi to everybody who's on the group. Beautiful. Great to have you join us today. We're just talking about how to, uh, um, about advancing your slides as a speaker. And we're looking at the important fact that uh, the custom animation is lost. Rachel, thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, so what, Rachel, when, you're, uh, when you load your slides up, any animations will be gone. So this is important if you're thinking about doing things like graphs that move and so forth. Unfortunately, Illuminate will not allow those functions. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now we're going to look at the whiteboard tools. These are the little icons immediately to the left of the, uh, of the whiteboard. <coughs> and what you'll see there is a laser pointer indicated with the red arrow. Um, if you press 
that laser pointer um, just to do a little test. Click on the laser pointer and highlight something of interest on the slide. There we go. Yes. So this is how Illuminate lets you bring in functionality. This is how Illuminate lets you add your animations. Okay. This means as a speaker, you can highlight things. You just have to do it within Illuminate rather than doing it in your original PowerPoint presentation. And if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to get rid of all of those, if you click in the top left, unselect objects, you'll see there's a little arrow that'll remove them. So Rachel, just one thing I'd like to uh, like to go back to, just so that you can uh, participate in today's session. If you'd like to speak, um, please raise your hand using the little blue hand with the uh, with green arrow. Exactly, and I'm happy to turn the microphone over to you. Rachel, did you want to say something? Okay, we're just doing a test then. Um, if you do want to add something, you click on the left-hand side. Um, you'll see the audio in the bottom left. You click that to speak, and you select it once to, uh, to stop speaking. And only one person can speak at a time. This is why we use the raised hands. Moving forward, when it comes to a... Uh, Mary Ellen's asking, uh, she doesn't see the unselect objects. Um, so to the left of your whiteboard, okay, you'll see um, there's a little pencilish type thing or a highlighter, and there's a pen. Erase all foreground objects. The top left icon. The top left icon is a little arrow that's about a 45 degree angle. If you hover over that, you'll see that there. And Rachel's saying that. Uh, that she wanted to speak when the microphone was handed over, so I am going to hand it over to Rachel. Rachel, please go ahead. No, unfortunately, we can't hear you, so there seems to be a bit of a problem with your audio. Rachel, at the end of today's session, um, you can do a full audio setup by going to Tools, Audio, then Audio Setup Wizard. That'll allow you to set your microphone and your um, and your speakers so that you can hear and participate by speaking. No problem. So we can just wait a moment for you to do that while I talk about this uh, uploading PowerPoint slides. Um, as a uh, as a moderator, I often prefer that people would send their slides to me in advance so that I can upload them for the participant and make sure that everything's running fine. However, you may choose to upload your slides yourself, or for example, you made some uh, last minute modifications. Um, so to upload your slides, the most important thing to remember is to close PowerPoint first. The slides will not open when you have PowerPoint open. After you've closed your PowerPoint, you select the folder icon. This is the little folder in the left, to the left of the whiteboard, the very, very bottom left icon you'll see a folder there. This allows you to, to, uh, to load your presentation. Just go with the default settings for the pop-up that you'll see, and choose the import size according to file option. I usually just select OK, 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 and accept whatever it is that the default settings are. Go with the default screen size, your monitor resolution. And one thing to keep in mind is that as you're uploading your PowerPoints, the size gets a lot larger even when you use the most basic, um, basic import size. So if you have text and images and it's a, a standard PowerPoint presentation that most of us use, um, it does get larger. So please keep that in mind because the maximum size is 20 megabytes. I see that Lucy's just writing in a question. Lucy's asking if you can upload multiple files. Yes, indeed you can. So if you had, for example, um, a PowerPoint presentation that was from a colleague and you wanted to merge the two, you absolutely can. What you're going to do is um, just decide where in the presentation you want it. Okay. So if, for example, right now I'm on slide 40 out of 67, 
Okay? I'm going to go to slide upload and it asks me, do I want to insert it after this? Do I want to insert it before this? Would I like to replace the screen with this? It gives me those options and then you just decide where you want it. So absolutely, Lucy, yes, you can upload multiple files. Thanks for the question. One thing you may choose to do at the beginning of your session um, is an icebreaker to have some sort of interactive component in addition to the happy faces and so forth. So we're going to try using some of these tools again. I'd like to ask you what it, your dream destination for a Cochrane Colloquium would be. I mean, I don't know about you, but my dream is New Zealand, but I see a hand raised. Um, Lucy and Rachel, please, sorry, Rachel, please go ahead. Okay, we'll try Lucy. Lucy, if you wanted to speak, please feel free. Ah, okay, Lucy's written in, um, if your file is too large, can you break it down and upload several, um, several 20 megabyte files? That's an interesting question. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I expect the 20 megs is going to be the max because of, um, uh, bandwidth and so forth. I expect that's why they have their limit, but I don't know. Um, so please uh, feel free to try it. We can try that and see if uh, see if it'll allow us to take more than that. So thanks for your question. So let's take a look at this map here. I'd like to ask everybody to use their wand and indicate point of interest on the screen. Okay. So where is your dream destination for a Cochrane Colloquium? To the left of the whiteboard, you'll see a little laser pointer or what looks like a wand. Please indicate your dream destination. I'm seeing, oh, South Africa, very nice. I'm seeing somebody putting up in Europe. It looks like the UK. I'm seeing, wow, does somebody want to go to Ottawa? Maybe that was Quebec City that we saw there, in which case somebody is in luck. So this is, oh, and I see a, um, is, that, is that Japan? Maybe that's Singapore? How good's my uh, geography? <laughs> I think I've seen Japan there. So thank you very much for doing that. As you can see, it's a way to, uh, it's a way to get people to interact, a way to get people to, to participate in the session um, by having them point on the screen or use their polls or use these happy faces. It really does help keep it dynamic. And I see that, uh, that Rachel's having some difficulty with the audio setup, um, so, uh, so she said she'll address at the end. Rachel, do feel free to, uh, to type any questions that you may have, um, because we can all see uh, the questions that you type in. So if you did have a question, please feel free to do that. And we will move on a little bit. Okay. Any questions at this point? So feel free to type or raise a hand or any additional questions that you have. I'm just waiting a moment. I see that Mary Ellen's typing in and she's saying so far she's good. Waiting to see if anybody else has a question. Okay, can we send a happy face to indicate to move on? Beautiful, thank you. Okay, so going through some of the other tools of Illuminate, okay, we're now going to be looking across the top of the screen here because we've been focusing on those whiteboard tools. Now let's take a look across the top. Um, one of the functions of Illuminate is application sharing. This means that if, you're, you, if you'd like to use um, a review manager, if you want to show somebody how to do a risk of bias table, you can share, the demonst you can share that, uh, that application right here. You can share the Cochrane Library, you can share other websites and databases and so forth. And you do that by clicking on the application sharing. Um, one thing to, uh, to keep in mind when you're doing that is having your, um, having your application open. Um, when you, the one that you'd like to share. So as an example here, you can see how RevMan will appear within an application sharing window within the, uh, within the whiteboard in the center there. You'll want to have it open in advance, and so you go to Tools, Application Sharing, 
and then you go over to Share Application. If you'd like to send a file, you would use this if, for example, you're sending an evaluation. Or if you'd like to send somebody, if you're talking about a particular article and you'd like everybody to have a copy of that, you can send it right in the middle of your presentation using this File Share button. And that's the one I'm going to use at the end of today's session to send around an evaluation form. Lume also gives you the option of web touring. Um, this allows you to open a web browser so you can go, th for example, through the Cochrane Library or through your particular group's website if you'd like. Beside that, again, we're just going across the top here, um, you'll see a timer. For those of you who signed in early, at the beginning of the session I had a timer to show that we were going to be starting in 15 minutes. Um, this, is, this is totally optional, but sometimes it does help participants just as a reminder. Or if, for example, if you're going to be running the session a few minutes late, you might choose to initiate a countdown just so people are, are aware of when you're actually going to start the session. We record all Illuminate sessions. This is done so that we, we have a recording uh, for our archives, but it's also done to produce YouTube videos, and we'll go through that in just a moment. Thank you very much to, uh, to Pajo. Um, Pajo takes our, our recordings, and they match it to the, to the slides and create YouTube videos out of those, um, which is really helpful to promote the work that your group is doing. To promote, uh, to promote your particular presentation. And they're all advertised on the, uh, on the PAHO website. So for example, you can see a webinar that, uh, there that I gave last year on what equity can do for you. It's all posted on PAHO, which is fantastic. And we also post it on the Cochrane Canada website. Um, on the Canadian Cochrane Centre's page, you'll find, uh, you'll find an archive of the webinars with a feature there. You can also access it through YouTube. So for example, if you do a, a YouTube search for my last name, Yufing, and then you put in uh, YouTube, you'll find my, uh, the YouTube video from last year. This just gives an indication of, uh, of the number of hits and where some of these videos are being picked up. Um, these are some of the functions that, uh, that YouTube offers. So if you'd like to know how many people are accessing your particular webinar. Um, you can get some of these statistics which, which really help for your metrics. This is from, uh, from February uh, 2011. You'll see that the number of hits is really increasing over time. And each one of these lines represents a different, uh, a different YouTube video. Are there any questions at this point? Is there anything that anybody is wondering about? I see a hand raised by Sally. Sally, feel free to go ahead and talk. OK, I'm just waiting a moment for a couple of people to type in. I'm waiting for Sally. We see Lucy typing. And I cannot hear Sally. Can you re-record later if it goes wrong? Um, you can. The difficulty with that, um, I once uh, I forgot to record a webinar that I was giving a while back. And uh, the difficulty about recording later is that you lose any of the, um, uh, any of the interactions. It means that if somebody had been speaking, um, y you'll lose that. So unfortunately, re-recording later, unless you'd like to run the whole session again as perhaps as a, um, more of a module, not really, not really, which is unfortunate. And again, I, I forgot to record one of, our, uh, one of our early sessions, so that means I've now lost that session. That, that was a really good session. So you just have to go back and re-record it yourself if you really needed it still. Thank you. Any other questions at this point? 
Okay, thank you. Sally, if you'd like to try again, feel free. Hi, um, I was just wondering, would you encourage questions as you go along, or would you give the talk and then ask the questions? Thank you for that question. Um, we have a slide coming up on that with, with some tips. And really, it, it depends on your style of, of being a presenter. Um, myself, I prefer to offer questions um, throughout because I often find that, um, that people are shy about contributing and that people um, aren't so comfortable with using a microphone. So in my view, if somebody wants to speak, by all means, please feel free. Um, some other presenters who um, uh, have, have a bit more of a, uh, a didactic style prefer to use specific time points because they feel that, that asking questions interrupts the flow of what they're doing. So really, it, I would leave that to, to what you're comfortable with um, because each, each person is different. So thanks for your question. So to exit your webinar, file, exit. A couple of tips for background. I'm more than happy to work with anybody who's delivering a webinar just before their session if you need a reminder or a refresher of some of these functions. Um, I'm trying to do, uh, to do these speaker sessions where a number of people learn together, but if you, you would like an independent session, I'm more than happy to do that. In terms of the participants, given that you are all participants in today's session, um, you'll know that you get, a, uh, you get an email with information on how to log in. You'll get the login details, your participant number, and so forth. Um, you'll also get, uh, get information about Illuminate and how to use it. A typical timeline for a webinar. If the webinar is an hour, say from 12 to 1, um, at around 11.30, I'll be logged in. This allows to, uh, to make sure Illuminate's running fine. If I have your slides in advance, I'll up your, load your slides at that point for you. Um, as a speaker, I'd suggest you log in at least 15 minutes early. This allows you to ask any questions to me. It allows you to, uh, to double check your slides, run through them really quickly just to make sure everything's fine, and to address any problems that there may, have, that there may be. We initiate a timer. And before every, every uh, Illuminate presentation, you'll see those slides that we went through at the beginning saying thank you to PAHO, um, announcing the series. There'll usually be a biography, things like that. And that's something that, as the moderator, I would provide for you. And then we start the session. As the speaker, you'll be the one advancing the slides and so forth. Um, so that, that won't come from me at all but I am happy to be here and provide that sort of technical support, answer those questions in the whiteboard, um, be there as a resource for any of those things that you may need. And then we wrap it up. As a speaker, what I'm going to need from you is your picture and your biography. I'd like to know, can I send people your PowerPoint? So if people email to the center and say, I'd really like to have those slides, is that OK? Um, questions. What sort of questions would you like to have? Um, would you like questions that are going to be throughout? Would you like specific time points? If you could please let me know that, that helps me to help you moderate the session well. Are you going to have polling? It would be really helpful if I knew what sort of polls you were going to have in advance. Um, and is there any specific promotion that you'd like to do? Beyond the, uh, beyond the promotion that we usually send out, did you have something specific in mind for the advertising of your session? We'll go through those introductory slides that I showed at the beginning of today's session. And then I'm going to upload your slides right in here so that you can present them. A couple of tips for your webinars. Um, what possible blips will there be? 
Do you remember how to advance your slides? Um, do you remember how to use the tools? Is there somebody who's going to be helping you? Um, for most of you on, t uh, on, the, uh, on the session today, you will have a moderator who's helping to support you. So the moderator will be there to help address those technical questions or problems. Orientation sessions. By joining today, I hope you've had a sense of, uh, of what Illuminate has to offer and how you can run a session. Um, if you would like an additional orientation session, or perhaps even just the day of a quick refresher, please let, let me know, and uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, Nonverbal communication is missing. So it's really important as a speaker to, uh, to be enthusiastic, to, to ask people to participate, to ask them to use their pointers, their happy faces, their applause, and so forth. Um, th that's something that really does get people engaged. And questions throughout to avoid that sort of one voice, monotony, repetitive, etc. Having questions may help break up that session. And one wants to uh, avoid dead air. So you'll notice a few times I said something like, so I see that Mary Ellen is typing in right now. We're just going to give her a moment to do that. And in other news, today's weather is very sunny in Ottawa. You might choose to just fill the air so that people know the session's still happening. They didn't get disconnected. Everything is still OK. It's, as long as people are hearing that voice, they know that everything is fine with their technology. You might choose to, uh, to log in before your next webinar using that participant key, just to make sure the interface is the same, because sometimes it does change. In terms of technical support, um, what we usually say is Cochrane Canada is not able to provide technical support if you're having difficulty with, for example, your audio or et cetera. Um, so it's important as a speaker to make sure to mention that and say, if you do have problems during the session, please type into our moderator, or I'd be happy to follow up with you after the session. Are there any questions at this point? I'll give just a moment. I see that Rachel's typing in, so we'll just wait for her question. And in other news, it is indeed sunny in Ottawa today. It's a beautiful day here. Rachel's asking, uh, could we test the microphones? She says that, uh, that she can't hear other participants. Um, Rachel, can you send a happy face? You can hear me, yes? OK, so you just cannot hear Sally and Lucy and so forth. Um, that's something to go through with the audio setup. OK? Um, and you're saying that you heard Sally. OK, fantastic. Um, people's microphones vary. Um, and that's something that, unfortunately, without being able to, to try each one, I don't know. Um, Lucy, are you able to speak? I'm going to try turning it over to you. OK, we cannot hear Lucy. Um, so apparently, there's something, there's something funny with Lucy's microphone as well, but thanks for trying. And I know we've heard Sally, and we've heard, uh, um, we've heard Mary Ellen. So unfortunately, microphones are, um, as I said, they're, they're variable. One advantage to Illuminate is that you have that chat room as a backup. Um, which is really helpful because technology is so fickle, and because people are around the world, you can't. Uh, it's not very easy to offer to help. Um, so when uh, when we have this chat room, it's a it's a backup. And Rachel, you're saying that your uh, your audio setup seemed to be okay. You could hear your own voice, and the setup was okay. I don't know. Rachel, can you try one more time? I'm turning the audio over to you. OK, Rachel, I'd be happy to work with, you, uh, work with you after the session, and we'll see if we can get that sorted out. Are there any other questions that anybody has? Lucy's asking about, um, about microphone bars setting up. That's one potential option. Um, again, Rachel, you and I will go through that. We'll go through that at the end of the session. 
So that's it for today. That's your introduction to Illuminate and to the uh, to the different functions that it offers. Um, I hope that you find. Uh, thank you very much, Mary Ellen. I hope that you find uh, that you find Illuminate something you'd like to use um, because it's something that we're using a lot and are finding it really helpful. Um, so my email is there if you have any questions, and my telephone number as well. Um, thanks for sending those messages. And before everybody signs off today, thanks a lot, Lucy. I appreciate that. Before you sign off, I'd like to send an evaluation form. Um, and if you were able to uh, able to complete this and send it back to me, I'd really appreciate it because it helps us to know um, to know whether our our sessions are going well and whether people are finding them uh, are finding them useful and helpful. So that uh, that that evaluation form is coming through just now in a PDF. Um, should be opening on your screen in about ten seconds or so. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to email me after the session, or I can answer them now. Um, and right before you're actually going to give a session, again, I'm happy to do, do a refresher if that'd be useful. So thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate your time, and that's it for today. Thanks a lot.